He was a tall and burly man, dashing crazily, and many on the streets fell as he rammed past them. They complained loudly. What gives? What's up with the heated run on such a hot day? Wow, my first time seeing anyone come out without wearing their face. Many started laughing as they commented, since they weren't really angry anyway. But that man rampaged all the way and crashed head on with a large, luxurious horse carriage and blood spattered on the spot. He fell back first onto the ground in a heap and the pedestrians who were joking around all screamed. The horse carriage owner was also shocked, poking his head out to ask, Who was that? Who crashed into me? Everything was so sudden, Shilian had to put the matter with the boy onto the back burner for now, and he rushed over. What's happened? he asked. That man who rammed his head into the hard, solid carriage seemed to have passed out, his disheveled hair blocking his face, and there were a number of people surrounding him carefully and watching. Before Shilian got close, however, the man suddenly leapt up in a fit and wailed. I can't stand it any more. Someone, someone kill me. Hurry, someone, come kill me, please. A few of the other burly men passing by couldn't watch any more and commented, Which house let their psycho loose? Take him away, jeez. They were originally going to arrest that man, but when they approached, when they saw that lunatic's face up close, they all screamed too and backed away in a hurry. What is this monster? they cried. That psycho man, however, chased after them, crying maniacally. Hurry and beat me to death. Those men were horrified, and as Shirlian approached, they saw it was his highness, the crown prince, and rushed to hide behind him, like he was a divine reprieve. Without blinking, Shirlian raised his leg and kicked, knocking that crazy man down. The man tumbled a few times, ending up like a mud-covered dog. Some pointed at him. Your Highness, this man, this man, he has, he has. No need for them to point it out. Shailen also saw it. This man had two faces. Technically, it was one face with another grown from it. The second face was squished on half of the cheek of that crazy man about the size of a palm. Although this man was young, that face was a wrinkly old man, ugly to the core. Shilin was also shocked to the core, his mind filled with only one thing. What is this monster? He immediately gripped the sword that was hung at his waist and unsheathed it. That sword was an enchanted weapon gifted to him by the heavenly martial emperor named Hong Jing. Ever since he met that white clothed character, he had kept the sword on his person at all times, in case there was a need for it. Just maybe he'd get to see that creature's true form one of these days. Under the current circumstances, that sword was certainly useful. Once unsheathed, the shine of that blade was brighter than snow. Yet, when he looked, the reflection on the blade did not change whatsoever. It was still just this man, and it was still just those two terrifying faces. That meant that this crazy man wasn't in any shape or form a monster or a demon. He was indeed human. However, was there really anyone in the world who would have such a growth? If he was born this way, then how could it not be known within the royal capital for all these years? Shilian was both astonished and suspicious. And suddenly, someone on the side spoke up with a quivering voice. How, how did he become like this? Hearing him, Shilin immediately sheathed Hong Jing and turned his head. You know him? Was he not like this before? Shilin asked. A number of people replied. We know him. We used to work with him. Of course, he was not like this. Before, his face... How could it have something like this? Seeing that the crowd was growing bigger, almost to the point of blocking the whole main street, 
With a grave expression, Shailen inhaled and shouted loudly and clearly. Everyone, don't come close. It's nothing. Break it up. That bandaged boy helped him keep the crowd away, but Shailen didn't notice. He was busy calling for Feng Xin and Mu Ching in the communication array. Come quickly to the Marshal Deity Avenue in the Royal Capital, he said. After lowering his hand, he saw another close by who looked tentative and floundering, exceedingly hesitant. So Shailen took a step toward him. Do you have something that you wanted to say? Shailen asked the man. With the Crown Prince's query, that man seemed to have found his courage and said, Your Highness, there's something that I don't know if I should speak of. Shailen had no time to listen to him ramble winding words and cut in bluntly. Get to the point. A few days ago, the man said, some bumps appeared on my chest. Three big ones and two small ones. I didn't feel anything. They don't itch or hurt. And they actually feel pretty good when you nudge at them. I didn't think much of them, but seeing this buddy here, I'm feeling pretty. I feel like I might be punished for something. He laughed flatly and loosened his robe, showing his chest. There's nothing wrong with me, is there? The moment he took off his robe, everyone fell silent. On the chest of that man wasn't just some bumps. It was clearly the blurry face of a woman with all five of her senses intact. That man looked down and was also shocked. How did it become like this? It clearly wasn't that. That. He trailed off. That lifelike? That realistic? No matter what adjective used, it was fully horrifying. Everyone around was terrified, and in spite of himself, that man grabbed onto the hem of Shailen's robe and cried, Your Highness, save me. At the same moment, Feng Xin and Mu Ching received Shailen's call and came rushing over by the towers. Seeing the picture before them, they both furrowed their brows. Feng Xin shouted, Stand back. What are you playing at? Shailen didn't have the time to explain. He patted that man's shoulders and comforted. Don't worry, keep calm. His tone of voice was warm and firm, serious but kind. That man thought that Shailen had everything under control and believed without a doubt that a small matter like this was nothing to his highness the crown prince, and so he relaxed. However, Shailen's mind was in turmoil. That human face was actually something that grew gradually, and those with the symptoms, he would call it a symptom for now. It wasn't only just one person. Then, dare he assume, that there were many more? He immediately gave Feng Xin and Mu Ching a rough account and commanded, Report this to the palace. Pass down this order. Search the whole city and see if there's anyone else with a similar affliction. Do not miss a single person. Because that thing was so shocking, once the king received the news, he made it a priority, dispatching a large number of troops to search and investigate, the work highly efficient and effective. By that night, it was confirmed. Within the entire royal capital, there were already five people with faintly visible faces growing on their bodies. Of those five, either they saw and didn't take it to heart, or the faces were growing in areas not easily detected. In addition, the faces didn't itch or hurt, so they wouldn't have noticed. Other than that, there were over ten others who had shallow bumps appearing on their bodies, no doubt the still immature faces. In this group of twenty or so people, there were more women and youth. When they were sent forth before Shilian, one after the other, they were filled with unease and greeted each other, comforting one another at the same time. Initially, Shilian was speaking to someone on the side, taking care of some business. But when he noticed them, he felt something was amiss. He asked, Do you all know each other? The officials, who had worked all night, briefly glanced at their report and replied, Your Highness, 
Many of them live on the outskirts of the royal capital, fairly close together, so maybe they've crossed paths as neighbors. Many who lived in the same area, Mu Ching was aghast. People who lived close together all grew those human faces. This thing is contagious, he said. Shailen thought of it faster than he did. He just didn't say it as fast. Immediately, he commanded, Isolate them. Disperse the non-infected. Don't let anyone come close to this place. Find a place to quarantine everyone here. A contagious, strange disease. When those words leaked out, it was more effective than the order to disperse any strong arming troops. Not only did the onlooking crowd scatter, more than half the houses on the street emptied out. Shilin ordered for the officials and soldiers he had appointed to gear up for protection, and brought those twenty or so people to the outskirts of the royal capital where some of them lived. Nearby the residential area on the outskirts, there was a large forest called Buyo. The government officials had intended to build a quarantine there to temporarily settle the sick. However, when they entered the woods, while others were busy building a camp, Shailin was feeling more and more unsettled the more he walked. Feng Xin and Mu Ching noticed it too. It was Feng Xin who spoke up first. Your Highness, isn't this where Lang Ying... Xiaolin immediately dropped his hands by his side, frowning deeply. Yeah, he said, it was here. The Spuyo forest was the very place that Lang Ying had barehandedly dug and buried the dead body of his son. Having realized this, the three looked at each other. Although they couldn't quite put their finger on it, a rough guess was forming in their minds, pushing for them to start searching for the place where Lang Ying had buried the corpse that day. Yet it had been months, and with so many trees in the Buyo forest, how could they possibly remember exactly which tree the child was buried under? Just then, an indescribably foul stench wafted through the air. That disgusting stink was somewhat like that of a rotten corpse, but it was even more suffocating. Just one breath and it could knock a man out. Others smelled it too and started backing away, covering their noses and fanning in front of their faces. What's over there? they asked. What's going on? It's worse than a ten-year-old pickle jar. Shilin rushed forward and followed that terrifying smell, and sure enough, he came to a familiar-looking crooked tree. The earth under the tree was slightly raised, forming a benign mound. The soldiers raised their swords and gathered to protect Shilin, but he raised his hand to stop them. He said gravely, Be careful. Normal people shouldn't come close. The not-normal person, Feng Xin, grabbed a shovel off-handedly and approached. After shoveling a few times, the mud mound became a ditch, and the foul stench grew heavier. Feng Xin dug more mindfully. After shoveling a few more times, a small black thing was dug out, and it seemed to be squirming. Feng Xin slowed his movement, and the soldiers reacted like they were facing a great enemy. Suddenly, the earth arched up, and a swollen, bloated, giant body broke out from the soil, exposing itself before the torch-holding crowd. That rotten, foul stench surged instantly, and most of the people on sight threw up on the spot. Shailian's pupils shrank. That thing couldn't be described as human anymore. Anything would be more human than it. No one would be able to tell that this gigantic corpse was once a small, emaciated child. The urge to vomit rolled up to his throat, and Shailian looked away. Feng Xin and Mu Ching were dumbfounded too, blurting out, What's this? Is that a curse or a simple rotten corpse? No matter what the thing was, Shailin knew what they needed to do. Stand back. The further, the better. I'm going to burn that thing. Shailin raised his hand and a large stream of flames blew out. Just as the fire was ablaze and the smoke was thick, 
the sharp sound of a battle horn from the distant royal capital came, loud and shrill, calling all to order. The three of them looked up at the same time. That was the signal of an enemy attack. Feng Xin cursed. Fuck. Of all times, they had to come now. Mu Ching's face was dark, looking gloomy even under the firelight. Maybe this was intentional, he said. Shilin made the call. Mu Ching, you stay here and take care of this. Feng Xin, you come with me. We'll repel them first. Remember, don't let them notice any weak point. That night, the two hurriedly rushed out of the city fortress and hurriedly fought a battle. Although their battle came out of the blue, they still won. Even if they won, however, none of the Schindler soldiers, Shilin included, felt the joy of victory. The strange disease that appeared so randomly came to be called the human face disease by the people. Words of it passed through the royal capital like lightning, causing uproar and great unease. The king had considered blacking out the news, but the first victim had rampaged the streets. There were countless witnesses, so this was something that couldn't be hidden from the start. Besides, the human face disease was spreading rapidly. In just six days, over 50 people found similar afflictions appearing on their bodies. All at the same time, the sieges from Yang An were increasing. Attacked from both sides, Xilin could barely find the time to go to Yang An and create rain. All the spiritual power and energy for it was all spent at the quarantine in the outskirts instead. Within the chilly Buyo forest, large fields of temporary tents and huts were built. Xilin crossed through a ground full of patience. This quarantine started with 20 or so people, but soon it turned into hundreds and was growing even bigger. Every day, Shailen would come if there was time and use his power to relieve the horrifying symptoms of those affected. However, he still couldn't cure the root cause and what the people had hoped was to have him heal them completely. As Shailen walked, a young man lying on the ground suddenly raised his hand and tugged at the hem of his robe. Your Highness, I won't die, will I? Shailen was about to respond and noticed that this man looked familiar. Upon closer look, wasn't he the passerby who gave him an umbrella on that rainy day that Shailen had learned that Shenle was short on water? Recalling that day, that rain, that umbrella, warmth filled Shailen's heart. And he knelt down gently patting that young man's arm. He told him in a serious tone, I will do my best. That man seemed to have received the hope to survive. His eyes twinkled with joy, and he said, Good, good, and lay back down again. From those fervent eyes, Shailen could tell that the man truly believed that he could do it. Thus every time he met those eyes, a sense of self-blame would grow deep in his heart, and the need to find a cure grew more desperate. After making a round through the quarantine, Shailen found a place to sit. Mu Ching started a campfire, and Shailen sat deep in thought. Some distance away, a few errant boys walked off carrying a stretcher, muttering to each other, yet somehow their words had reached Shailen's ears. How many is this now? one asked. The fourth or fifth, I think, replied the other. On the stretcher was a patient who died in the Buyo forest. In truth, it was hard to die from the human face disease. Yet, that was even more frightening. Without death, it meant that for the rest of the victims' lives, those things would stay on their bodies. Just thinking about it would make one lose the will to live. Especially young women. They care for their faces. So if something like that were to grow on somewhere important like their face, most would choose to end their lives. Someone sighed. When will this end? Another said, We have his highness, the crown prince. We won't lose. Just relax. The one who complained said, 
I'm not afraid of losing battles. But with a situation like this, does it matter if we don't lose battles? It's not easy for us civilians to live on like this. He sighed again. Never mind, never mind. I'm not complaining. Just pretend I said nothing. I said nothing. If Feng Xin was there, he would have immediately rushed up to curse them out. Wu Cheng, however, only gave Xie Lin a look and continued to build the fire, not saying anything. Only when those two were completely gone did he say flatly, Ignorant commoners only know how to blame others in the heavens. Do they think that a martial god has control over everything? Xie Lin shook his head. What those men said had logic. He was a martial god. When he was part of the army, there would be no battles unwon. Yet at times like these, what use was it to win battles? Forming an army was to protect the civilians. Yet if the civilians were all suffering from the attack of a plague, then wouldn't their advantage turn into a joke? Just then, the campfires wavered, and another sat down next to Shelian. It was Feng Xin who had returned. Shilin asked immediately, How was it? Feng Xin shook his head. It was exactly the same as when you searched. There are no traces of Lang Ying on Beza Hill, and nothing of that white-clothed character. Who knows where they're hiding? And there's no way of confirming whether they're the ones behind this. Also, the Yong'an people were all fine, like we suspected. Not a single case of the human face disease. Mu Ching poked at the fire. The royal capital and Beza Hill are so close. There's no way that no one was infected. It's easy to see that they must be the ones behind all of this. Many believed this secretly, and thinking this way made sense. However, even if they accused Nan Ying secretly or openly, the man was well hidden away, and they couldn't find any proof, so they could do nothing. They suspected that the human face disease was started by a curse, and that the source of the curse was the corpse of Lang Ying's son. Yet, if it was a curse, then it was a good one. It didn't leave any traces for them to investigate, so there was no evidence to confirm their suspicions. And who knew, maybe, this human face disease was nothing more than a new, naturally formed plague. There was no way Shilin could draw any conclusions on what the disease actually was, unless they apprehended the suspect. He had given the heavenly court a rough report of his assumptions. Yet, as mentioned before, Shilin's descent was a transgression. Unlike in the past, where if he wanted to report something, he could very well just barge into the great martial hall and scream in Jinwu's ear. Now, he had to do it by the book. It must be known that by the book meant, if lucky, just throwing out hefty amounts of merits would pass word through to the heavenly officials. If unlucky, he might be forced to go through complicated red tape roped in endless delays. Afterwards, it would still only be some other heavenly officials who'd be sent forth. Shilin himself was a heavenly official, and other than Jun Wu, there were very few who could match him in power, so the heavenly officials sent forth might not even be effective. Jun Wu carried a heavy burden. By mortal words, he was a machine with a host of problems to deal with every day, so there was no way that he could come to Shilin's aid in person. Thus, the reporting was just for show, and Shilin didn't expect anything to come of it. Moreover, None of that was what was on Shirlian's mind. It was another problem, he said. If we assume that Yong An used a curse for the sake of defeating the royal capital, then the most effective attack would be to the army. Once the army falls, wouldn't that be the same as opening the gates? It wasn't that there were no victims of the human face disease in the army, but in comparison, they were few in number, only three or four were affected, and once they were sent to quarantine, the situation was immediately under control and nothing spread. 
Feng Xin seemed to have thought of something, and said, Maybe they think that even if they defeat the army, with you around, they'd lose. So they gave up on the army and targeted the civilians directly. Hearing this, Mu Qing chuckled dryly. Feng Xin immediately reacted. What are you laughing about? Nothing, Mu Qing said. You always manage to bring up good points. I have nothing to say. People who bore the intent to snipe at others, but still pretended to sound courteous, annoyed Feng Xin the most, so he ignored Mu Qing completely. If it was them, then they're despicable. Fight honestly on the battlefield if they have the guts, but don't use shady tricks to harm innocent civilians. Xilin wholeheartedly agreed and sighed. I've been thinking these past few days about just what causes the infection. We have to know the causes before we can control the disease. Isn't it obvious, Feng Xin said, infection comes from getting too close, touching or drinking the same water, eating together, sleeping together, or whatever. Shelin rubbed his forehead. On the surface, that's not wrong, but take the army for example. The soldiers in the army all drink, eat, and sleep together, and are in closer quarters than any other household. So why aren't there more soldiers infected? Mu Qing fired his brows. So what you mean is even under the same circumstances, with different body types, some will be infected and others will not. You want to find out just what kind of people are immune to the human face disease, right? Xilin raised his head. Mu Qing, you understand me. That's exactly it. If we can find that out, then there might be a way to stop the human face disease from spreading. Mu Qing nodded. Good, then let's look at it this way. What kind of people are more likely to get infected? What type of patients dominate the quarantine of Buyo Forest? Xilin had walked through the camps endlessly in the past few days and could answer even with his eyes closed. He said immediately, women, children, teens, seniors, and young men who are smaller in bulk. Feng Xin wondered, so only the weak get infected? Should we have the king order for everyone in the royal capital to work out and strengthen their bodies? Xilin and Mu Qing both gave him a look, not wanting to respond. After a pause, Feng Xin himself added, wait, that's not right. Thank you.